Okay, let's review the power of compound interest. So we have two people, um, Stephen and Allison. And Allison's going to contribute to her tax-free savings account, $6,000 a year for 10 years, uh, starting at age 20. You can see that here. And Stephen is not going to start until age 30, and he's going to contribute to um, age 65, so 35 years, at $6,000. And in both cases, they're going to earn a 10% rate of return. Now let's see how they've done. And we've run this out to their age 66, uh, but we can see Stephen on this side has accumulated just over $2 million and Allison about uh, 3.4, so quite a huge difference. And keep in mind, Allison's contributed $60,000 to her tax-free savings account and Stephen over 35 years has put in $210,000. So let's take a look now and see what happens if it's only a 6% rate of return rather than a 10%. And we can see now that they're actually both about the same. Actually, Stephen's got just slightly more than Allison. But remember, Stephen contributed $210,000 and Allison only $60,000. So let's change this again. And let's see what it looks like if Allison contributes from age 20 to 40 and Stephen then contributes from 40 to 65. And we can see there's quite a huge difference there, right? Stephen's only accumulated $381,000, Allison's million dollars. So so the next question you may ask is, how much money does Stephen have to contribute to catch up to Allison? And what we can see, if Stephen waits to age 40 before he starts to contribute, he's gonna have to contribute $16,500 to his tax-free savings account for 25 years uh, to catch up to Allison. So those are just a couple examples of the power of compounding and why it's important, if it's possible, to start investing earlier.